The NBA draft is tomorrow. It's been three weeks since I did my last NBA big board. So now that I've watched a lot of film, researched these guys, what's changed? My top three might surprise you. It's the Wednesday episode of Locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked on Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Wednesday, day before the NBA draft. So we're going to run through a lot of prospects. My personal NBA big board. Please tell me in the comments below, do you agree or disagree? My top three has changed. My entire board has changed now that I've gone through the whole draft research process, talking to people who are draft experts, talking to people around the league as well to give you my top like 25-ish guys. I think that's kind of where I end my big board because beyond that, Eh, we'll see. And look, some of the guys that we talked about in yesterday's show, the second round pick episode, you know, weren't really going to make it in there. So I kind of put them all together here. So it's top 25. And thank you, of course, for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all breaking down everything you want to know about the team. No paywall, completely free. Just Pelicans talk every single day. Day. No one else coming to you like this, giving you the draft insight you want. The free agency discussion soon to come. Basically, st- starting on Monday, we're going to dive into free agency and build up to that. It's going to be a lot of fun here. So, subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Tell a friend about the show and leave a five star review with a comment. And of course, comment down below on YouTube. What's your top 10 guys in the draft? Where do you disagree with me? So, let's look at my first tier. There's five guys that I think are kind of tier one. It's it's really like three guys, but there's kind of five guys still in that grouping. So number one, and this is a change, I'm Paolo Banquero out of Duke, right? You can just see he's going to be a good scorer in the NBA. This is a guy who has a very high floor. He's going to be a solid scorer. He can rebound. He's got like, he's just like a man, right? Like dude's got tremendous size and you see some playmaking in him. You know, along with all five of these guys, there's guys, these are guys that it's like, okay, I can see them having a long career very easily in the NBA. I think when you look at the top three, Bancaro, Holmgren, and Smith, right? And that's my top three in order. I think Bancaro out of those three is probably the safest, more so than Smith. Smith, I expect to still go number one overall. And this big board is not a, you know, how is it going to play out? This is my personal rankings on him. So I have Bancaro one. Two, I have Chet Holmgren. You know, he's interesting because... I've seen people out on him uh, for his size, right? He's skinny, dude. But I think it's foolish. This is a guy who's going to be an excellent rim protector in the NBA and can also play out there on the perimeter. He can defend inside, he can defend outside, and he's a great shooter at 41.2%. So when you look at his defense, the shot blocking that he brings, right? Even blocking guys from behind, which is usually the hallmark of a really good rim protector. When they get by him, he can use his length to still block shots where it's you pin it against the backboard, something along those lines. Holmgren does that. So I think it's foolish to not really like this guy. Everything is there to like about him at seven foot 10. He's going to be a very productive player. He's already productive. Yeah, he's skinny. You'd like him to put a little bit of weight on, but he at the very least is going to be blocking shots and making threes and and continually improve as a rebounder in the NBA. Then at third, right? And this is the one that I think might surprise people. Jabari Smith out of Auburn, who will probably go number one. If I were the Pelicans with the first overall pick, I would be taking Jabari Smith. I think all of these guys are pretty close. I just think Bankero and Holmgren are a little bit safer than him. And they all have about the same ceiling to me. You know, if you took Smith one, it's going to be fine. He's a lethal shooter. 43.6% last season for Auburn, and he creates his own shot. He can guard multiple positions defensively, though he has a little bit of room to grow there, but he'll still be a plus defender at the very least in the NBA. Comes from NBA lineage, right? That's always an important thing. Kind of grew up around the game. You like those type of qualities in your players. At four, I have Jaden Ivey. This is kind of the, the you know tier, tier like B, 1B, tier 2, depending on how you want to call it. An athletic freak, and if you want a guard that has explosiveness and is a scorer, 
Jaden Ivey. You know, he can play inside and outside, which I love about him. He can, uh, his, his runs to the rim are excellent. He's got really good footwork, really long strides, and he's just kind of like gliding towards the basket. And he's a good enough shooter that it's, you know, only going to become better for him and he's going to improve with time. The mechanics there look really, really good. And he's a good passer. This is a guy who's willing to pass the ball to his teammates. Defensively, he has the tools to be good, but he's not there. He's going to be a score first guy in the NBA. You know, he loses track of his guy when he's working off ball. That lack of awareness drops him down a little bit, makes me a little bit unsure of him beyond anything being more than a score. The scoring is definitely going to be there, and he should at least improve on the defensive side of the ball a little bit. At five, I have Keegan Murray, and this is the final guy in my kind of tier one group. He's good. I underrated him in the beginning. I didn't watch enough of him. Then I did, and oh boy, there's a lot to like, right? At forward with good size at 6'8". You know, I, he has more upside than I realized. Great size, great athleticism for him too. Um, and he's a very good scorer and he's going to be a very good secondary scorer. You might not draft him to be the number one option on your team, but if he goes, say, five to the Pistons, that's perfect. They have Cade Cunningham, right? And that's where I think he probably ends up going. I, I would love that pick for him. He, he's going to be an amazing number two. He's going to be an amazing number two. And I think his floor is second best in this draft behind Ben Caro. He's a very good on-ball defender, very reliable. He's a little bit older at 22, but I've learned just drafts, right? I've been preaching this for a while. Just draft solid NBA guys. That That's Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray is a very solid NBA guy. And so when I look at him play, he's going to be good. He played in a tough conference. He led that conference in scoring. I don't care that he's older. He's going to go out and he's going to be able to get it done. He's going to play. And you're going to win games because of a guy like Keegan Murray. So that's my top five. Next, we'll get into the 6 to 13 range of players because these are the guys, I think, in the Pelicans range. And so that'll be the meat of the discussion in today's show. So that's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. So who do I have at 6, 7, 8, where the Pelicans are going to be drafting? A lot has changed since the last time. So before we get to all of that, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and whatever sports info you may need. So you can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews and news, including the NHL um, uh, finals. We've got Major League Baseball going on as well. So BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and whatever scores you might need. And... BetOnline.net remains your best source for other podcasts and news this season. And BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action over at BetOnline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We've been crushing it, I think. During the draft, the numbers have been sky high because you all want to know who the Pelicans are going to take at eight. We're giving you the prospect reviews, right? We're talking about trades they could make with the eighth pick. You heard me yesterday talking about second round picks. They have multiple. What are they going to do with all of those? Who might be worth kicking the tires on, taking a chance on? We're covering it all here like no one else at Locked On Pelicans. Monday through Friday, completely free for you. So subscribe, please. And leave a five-star review of the comment and comment down below on YouTube. So let's keep running through the big board here. We just went through the top five guys. So six, who I hope the Pelicans take him. And in our mock draft for the ultimate NBA mock draft, search that. It's a lot of fun. Me picking for the Pelicans at eight. I took Jeremy So on. He's six on my board. I love this dude. I think he's going to be awesome. He's a wing that can guard all five positions. Probably the best defensive player in this draft. 6'9", with great size, elite athleticism, really good side to side. Excellent rebounder, both on and off ball. Or sorry, excellent defender, both on and off ball. He's a strong rebounder. I see shades of like, you know, a, a not as good Ben Simmons, not as good Draymond Green, but he can reach that. He can facilitate too, and I think that's the big thing. You really see him being a secondary playmaker, a guy that can dish out four or five assists per game. Is he going to be getting triple doubles like Draymond Green does? Probably not, but he can get you half of that. And with the defense that he'll provide, with the rebounding that he'll provide, and the interior scoring that he can provide, 
I think that's a really, really strong player. And we know the lack of shooting is what knocks him. He was not a good three-point shooter, though he wasn't horrible on catch-and-shoot situations. But you've heard David Griffin say that they love guys. They don't love guys. They've shown they can develop three-point shooting for the most part. Or try to. Or they have a record of doing it with certain guys. So kick the tires. Not kick the tires. Draft a guy like Sohan and develop that out of him. And you have an unbelievable player. A Ben Simmons that could shoot. Think about that for a second. That's what Jeremy Sohan could turn into. The other thing that I really like about him is some of his playing experience. Other than Baylor, you know, he plays for Poland. And so you see him in Europe playing. And that's a different kind of experience than playing you know, in the Big 12, which, while not a bad conference, I wouldn't call one of the best ones out there. So kind of having some of that experience playing against other elite guys overseas, I think only kind of helps him. And David Griffin has also talked about how they think Europeans take to New Orleans a little bit more so than maybe American players do. So on grew up in England. So he kind of checks a lot of those boxes, I think, that the Pelicans would really like. So that's why I have him at six. And that's who, in our ultimate NBA mock draft, I had the Pelicans taking. The other guy I was really considering taking for the Pelicans in that ultimate NBA mock draft was Dyson Daniels. That's why I have it seven. I would like to see the Pelicans draft one of these two if they stay at eight. This is a guy that I think has flown up draft boards a little bit, and you can see why. His passing is elite. He can orchestrate the pick and roll right now. He's a great creative facilitator, and he can kind of pull the strings on the defense a little bit. And he's got excellent size, 6'7", a 7-foot wingspan. You know, he's a guard, but he can play on the wing, too, and guard wings. You know, he's great, again, at running the pick and roll. You can have him with the second unit doing that already. And he's a very good, versatile defender. He'll step in and be able to defend at the NBA level. Subpar uh, three-point shooter, like Jeremy Sohan, but it looked good in his workout. He's driven rave reviews from that. The mechanics look solid. He should be able to develop that. You have a guy that can be an elite six-foot-seven creator for you that can shoot and defend. Yeah, there's a reason why I see him going in the top 10. I'd be happy if the Pelicans drafted either Sohan or Daniels. At 8, I have Benedict Mather in the wing out of Arizona. He's a really good shooter and score, right? And upside everywhere else. I think if you get him the ball and he goes and, you know, can score, off cuts, whatever. I see him being very much a very solid role player in the NBA. Almost a six-man of sorts. I don't know if I see him becoming an all-star ever. I've kind of dropped him a little bit from when I where I originally had him. I like him a lot. If the Pelicans draft him, it's fine. I'd rather Sohan or Daniels. And I see this guy, again, being an elite role player. You need those type of players. When you have Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, you know, for a couple more years, you have C.J. McCollum too. That's a useful player to have. I think he's NBA ready. He's probably the best fit right now. For the Pelicans. I have him at eight. After that, I have Shaden Sharp, right? Didn't play last year. Haven't seen him since high school, but again, all of the raw tools, everything you want. Kentucky, I say it with a question because he didn't really play there, right? A little bit weird, you know? It's a little bit weird. He's kind of in the mold, I think, of a Scotty Barnes and Pat Williams, who have all done well in the NBA, but we saw them play. He canceled his workout with New Orleans. He was scheduled to come in and said, nah, don't want to do that for whatever reason. The things that worry me are about his camp and some of kind of the what's going on with his head and he doesn't seem to want to be here. I just don't want to deal with that. You know, the, the lack of playing last year, which was not all on him. It was also on Calipari, too. The plan wasn't to play him. He reclassified, got there, was supposed to practice. And I don't think people expected him to go into the NBA this season. So it's not all just on him. But there's a lot of big question marks and the lack of seeing him play last year worries me a little bit. But overall, he still has the physical tools. I think around 9, 10, whatever team's there, you almost have to draft him just based on pure upside. At 10, I have A.J. Griffin, guy out of Duke, maybe the best shooter in this draft. 48.3%, foot six with a 7-foot wingspan. That's all he does, though. Shoots the ball well. He's an okay enough passer as well, where it's not just kind of like a black hole to get him the ball. But he's got past injuries, knee and ankle, and basically missed his final two years of high school. Injury concerns worry me here in New Orleans. You know, the lack of defense, and he's not a good defender. Like, at all, not a good defender. You know, I think the shooting enough is to make you kind of kick the tires on him. Clearly, the medicals on him and the workout you put him through is going to be key. If your medical staff looks at him and goes, okay, we feel good that he's, you know, done hurting himself, 
Yeah, you know what? If there's none of the other guys you like, you can definitely draft him, though I would be less excited about him than a number of other guys. At 11, I have Usman Diop out of New Zealand. We just talked about him last Friday. 19 years old, 6'10", with over a 7-foot wingspan. Very raw, but he has the size and some of the athleticism that you would like. He's way quicker than you'd think. And he definitely can create separation between him and a defender. But he's not a good shooter. Not from two, not from three, 21.3% from three. He's good enough passer, definitely with room to improve. He's an above average defender. But in the Australian League last year, he did not play well. He did not play particularly well, especially for the first half. Final 12 games or so, he started to improve. That's at least important that you're getting better, but that's not considered a particularly difficult league. The fact that he struggled there worries me. How long will it take him to adapt? The upside is there. The upside for him is there. But I worry about him actually reaching that more so than a number of these other guys. That's why I have him lower than maybe some other people do. And I would be really nervous about drafting him. It's a really, really long-term project, which New Orleans can afford to invest in, certainly. I would just pick a different project that I think can actually reach their potential or has a greater chance of reaching their potential than De Jong does. 12, I have Johnny Davis out of Wisconsin. You know, he's not an elite athlete, but he creates space, a guard, right? He's very creative as an offensive player, though not a great three-point shooter, just 33.3% from deep last season. But he can get down low and score, and he's good with his back to the basket. You see a lot of Chris Paul in him. And a tough, tough defender. He can't guard four positions, can barely guard three positions, but certainly can lock down a backcourt. It's a useful player to have, right? You know, if you trade back, I think he's a trade back candidate to really look at. I think he's more well-rounded than who I have at 13, and that's Malachi Branham. Guard out of Ohio State, freshman six foot five. I really think he could have used another year, but it definitely seems like he's going to be on the verge of being a lottery pick. I just see him being one-dimensional. I see him being a scorer. I see him being a scorer. He drives to the basket well. He's a good shooter off the dribble. But he's a score first guy. Doesn't really look to pass at all. Defensively, he's bad. Can he get a bucket? Absolutely. Is that what New Orleans needs? A guy that wants to play isolation basketball? Not not in my opinion. And I don't know if he's going to develop more than that. Kind of watching him, I'm really not sure. And so I have him lower. I have him at the very end of the lottery if he goes in that. And the reason I have him at 13 is because, well, there's two centers right behind him that I don't particularly love. And so that kind of bumps him up a little bit, but it almost seems certain that one of those centers will get drafted ahead of him, I think. So who are those centers? Which order do I have Jalen Duran and Mark Williams in? Let's break that down, and then the rest of my NBA big board get you set for the draft, which is coming up here tomorrow. We're going to go a little long in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. So before we get to the end of the NBA big board here, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Built Bar. You know how our friends at Built Bar are always coming out with new amazing flavors? Well, this time Built has truly outdone themselves with the new mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both pie bar and mud pie puff. So it's the mud pie built bar and then the mud pie built puff. The puffs are the light, the airy, the protein infused marshmallow. They're not dense, they're awesome. Then you have the regular built bar. It's a little bit more dense, but just as delicious, whatever your preference is. Basically, it's just a big chocolate bar that's absolutely delicious, right? Rich whipped cream, chocolate mousse. They're covered in 100% real chocolate and it's topped with a cookies and cream crumble. They sent us some samplers of these. Oh man, you have no idea you're eating something healthy for you, except that you are. 16 grams of protein, only 150 calories, and 8 grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most delicious, creamy chocolate mud pie and wrapped it up in a healthy form just for you. And all Belt Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, which means they're healthy and tasty. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of additional health benefits. So eat something that tastes good and is good for you. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get the mud pie bar, and it's only going to be available for a limited time. And you're going to get 15% off your next order. This is the promo code I use. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off over at built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about the NBA draft. Getting you set with my big board. Where do you agree? Where do you disagree? 
Is there someone you really like that you think I should have higher? Someone that I should have way lower? Let me know in the comments down below. And now, go listen to the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft for your second listen. All of our local hosts making the picks. I dislike mock drafts where it's people just trying to project every single team. I don't know what the Thunder are really thinking and going to do because I don't cover them on a daily basis. Same for Portland, right? It's tough. That's me projecting. Just go listen to the hosts who actually know their teams to go out and make those picks. I know the Pelicans better than anyone else on Locked On. I should be making that pick. I did. That's where the advantage of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is, giving you just a quick overview of what all the teams could be thinking. So let's wrap up the big board here. We're going to go a little bit faster. At 14, I got Mark Williams, center out of Duke. I like him more than Jalen Duran from Memphis. Better size. I think he's a slightly better re, uh, interior score. The biggest thing is he can actually defend a little bit on the perimeter. I have Jalen Duran next, right behind him, but I don't like the idea of drafting either of these two guys in the lottery. They're one-dimensional centers. They're going to give you some, some defense, and they're going to give you a little bit of interior scoring, and Mark Williams can defend on the perimeter a little bit more. It's just, that's that's the reason I have him there. I think he's a better internal scorer, too. He reminds me a little bit of uh, Robert Williams, who did incredibly well for the Celtics. Uh, Jalen Duran at 15. Then after that, I have Ochai Abaji, wing out of Kansas at 16, right? Older at 22, but he's a solid basketball player. When we did the Locked On Pelicans community mock draft, he went in like the mid-20s. That was excellent value for this guy. He's going to contribute. Is he going to be an all-star? No. Is he going to be a really solid player for you, either as a fourth or fifth option or with leading your second unit? Absolutely. Does he have a ton more room to grow? I'm not really sure because he kind of does everything well, right? He's got a good frame, long arms. He can defend multiple positions. He's really good at attacking defenses that aren't set. I think that's a guy who I really like. He's streaky when it comes to his three-point shooting, but he knows what his what to do. And he's a guy that I think is going to adjust and contribute earlier on than some of these other guys at the NBA level. 17, Tari Eason, forward out of LSU. He's a gritty dude that's active defensively on and off ball. I think he stat hunts for some of those steals and blocks he gets, but he gets them, and there's something to be said for that. That's rather, you know, as opposed to a guy who stat hunts but doesn't get them. And I do think that his shot that he developed looks very real. So I think he's going to be a shooter at the NBA level, and he draws a ton of fouls with some of his interior play. That's great. The problem is he also commits a ton of fouls. Fouled out of like seven games, six games, I worry about that. How, if you're fouling that much, are you going to be playable? And I'm not so sure. It also doesn't sound like he's done well in interviews. After him, Ty Ty Washington guard from Kentucky, a guy in New Orleans also worked out. Really good shot creator. You know, he has shades of Chris Paul when he creates space for his mid-range jumper. He's not great from deep, but the mechanics look like they could be improved to become a three-point shooter. You know, if you want a pure point guard, he's probably the closest there is to there. I don't think you take him at eight, but he's definitely a trade-back candidate and a guy that New Orleans has at least looked at. So, there you go. Ty Ty Washington, 18 out of Kentucky. 19, EJ Little, forward out of Ohio State, a junior at 6'7". I think he's underrated in this draft. He's re got really good defensive versatility. He's a good post scorer, and he's an above-average passer, and not a bad spot-up shooter, 37.5% from deep. You need a big that can defend and space the court a little bit while giving you some interior scoring. You do a lot worse than EJ um, Little is. After that... Jaden Harvey Wing out of the G League Ignite. He's one of the better shooters in the draft. Really good off the bounce. Great ISO score. Not really good at the rim, though, but can create space for his mid-range. Problem is just not efficient. He's got a good shot. Really good mechanics. That'll translate well to the NBA. But again, like Malachi Branham, he's kind of one-dimensional and looks to score. You need a shooter and you're at the tail end of the draft. You could do much worse than Jaden Harvey. After that, I love the guys from the G League Ignite. You got Marjan, uh, Marjan Beauchamp, wing at six foot six, really good off ball role player, really good perimeter defender, and he's great on trying to close out and try and block a couple of shots with a seven foot one wingspan. Not a good three point shooter. He's got a decent handle. He screams role player in the NBA. 22, Nikola Jovic out of Serbia, 19 years old, 6'10. Basically, he's a sizable playmaker. You know, he grew up playing guard, so he's got a lot of those handles. He's good at running the pick and roll and being a screen setter. Very good vision, very good basketball IQ, but not an efficient scorer and bad defensively. You need a playmaker on the wing that can 
maybe do run your offense a little bit. That's that's what he's going to bring you. Can he develop the other things? Yep, yeah, possibly. But he's definitely a project compared to some of these other guys are. After that, Blake Wesley, wing out of Notre Dame. I don't know if he's going to shoot well at the NBA, but he's a good creator and he's got good enough handles to kind of slice through some defenses to look to drive and dish. That's kind of what he brings to the table. After him, the next three I have in some order, though, they're all really close. We don't need to go that much into them. Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara, then Bryce McGowan's out of Nebraska, and then Dalen Terry out of Arizona. Dalen Terry I do like because big time size for a guard, one of the bigger guards in this draft. But you're looking at him being towards the end of the first round. So that's my top 25, 26 guy big board. Did I get anything right? Anything wrong? Let me know down below. You've got some candidates for the Pelicans to take at eight. Some candidates for the Pelicans should they trade down, which I think is certainly an option. And we're going to find out what they end up doing tomorrow. So we've got another show tomorrow to get you set. And then don't forget, going to be live. Like right after the Pelicans make the pick, I'm going to be right here live, breaking it down in a live show. You can ask your questions. We'll have a lot of content out Thursday, Friday, all of that during the draft, after the draft. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. So make sure you stay locked on Pelicans. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Tell a friend about the show. Leave a five-star review with a comment. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Pelicans, the big board. Again, let me know where you agree, disagree. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. We'll be back with y'all tomorrow for the draft.